first of all, just want to welcome you to our web seminar today on RESIST, which is a disease response assessment tool that's been developed for use in clinical trials with solid tumor from oncology agents. And RESIST stands for Response Evaluation Criteria in Solid Tumors. We'll have that again for you on a slide in, in just a second. First, I'd like to just introduce myself. My name is Karen Gilbert. This is a photograph. My hair's a little longer now, but it's nice to kind of put a, a face with a name sometimes. I've been working in clinical research since 1994 and have held those various positions that you see on the screen over that time period. Over the last three years, though, I have been focused full-time in oncology monitoring. I'm really uh, very enthusiastic about the, the new and emerging immunotherapies that we have in oncology and, and just really felt like I wanted to focus into this therapeutic area. So that's what I've been doing for the last few years. Um, all right, so these are our learning objectives for the course, which you found on Barnett's website. We're going to um, uh, talk about some differences between RESIST version 1 and 1.1. 1 .1. We'll, we'll get into the nitty gritties of the components of RESIST data, as well as give you some um, experience with regards to actually assessing response based on, on some measurements tumor measurements. And then we'll, we'll focus the second half of this course on trends with tumor data, sort of like, a, I guess I would call them sticking points or challenges sometimes with, with tumor data and, and source documentation, as well as, as with the way that radiologists and principal investigators may document and or calculate resist data. So that's where we'll be going with this. So what is RESIST criteria? Um, this is actually what it stands for, as I mentioned before, Response Evaluation Criteria in Solid Tumors. So again, we're talking about solid tumor as regards to a therapeutic area. Hematologic malignancies have many of their own separate criteria, and, and there's a myriad of uh, response criteria that have been built for hematologic malignancies. But basically, RESIST overall is a standard way to measure how well a cancer patient or a subject in a clinical trial is responding to treatment. It was developed through an international collaboration, and the NCI defines RESIST this way, a voluntary international standard, not an NCI standard. RESIST is based on a simplification of former methods, including those developed by the World Health Organization and the ECOG organization. And the CIS criteria are based on measurable disease, okay? So basically, we're trying to determine whether the patient's tumors of interest, which we call lesions, whether they shrink, stay the same, or get bigger during the clinical trial, during the treatment regimen. And some of the benefits, the ways in which RESIS has positively impacted uh, solid tumor clinical trials include these things here. I mean, um, RESIS criteria have been adopt adopted widely throughout the world because they have a foundation of validated reproducibility and a broad acceptance throughout the world as a surrogate for many survivability endpoints. The use of RESIST in clinical trials, of course, lends credibility to endpoint data, and that credibility is recognized from the perspective of regulatory authorities, academia, industry sponsors, and clinician investigators. So, um, you know, the fact that everyone is sort of on board, if you will, with RESIST certainly lends a tremendous amount of, of value to it as, as a surrogate for survivability endpoints. So the history involved RESIST version 1.1, which was first published in 2000. And originally it was intended actually for a tumor response assessment just in phase two trials, but now you'll find RESIST used in, in all phases of product development. You can see the professional uh, international organizations who collaborated in the RESIST development here. And during the intervening years since RESIST version 1, was developed, there were some limitations or some questions that arose. This version one required 10 lesions, 10 target lesions, and clinicians and academicians 
began to question, were 10 lesions really needed? Did we need that many? Other questions were things like, were lymph nodes being adequately assessed and, and taken into consideration? And then as PET-CT functionality or this functional imaging became more and more widespread, there were some questions about whether or not we could incorporate PET-CT into RESIST to evaluate response. So in 2009, the first revision was published, and it's called version 1.1. Both versions are currently in use, and that depends upon the preferences of sponsors, regulatory authorities, your NCI collaborative groups, or sometimes can be based upon the actual solid tumor types that are, that are being evaluated. So there's no real criteria built within the versions themselves that would designate which one you would want to use. And what I have found, I work on a lot of sponsor trials, you know, industry sponsor trials. And what I've found is if they started with version 1 in their phase 1 trials, they'll just continue using version 1, you know, through the full development of the, uh, of the product for consistency. So that, that could be something that, that maybe enters into the decision making about which version to use. So it's helpful when discussing RESIST to make sure that we all have a, a solid foundation of terminology and definitions. These terms on the next two slides apply to both versions of RESIST, of course. Mm -hmm.